Good morning. It's Tuesday and it's 11 a.m. Time for the FIU Music Hour on WDNA 88.9 FM, presenting live weekly performances in the WDNA Jazz Gallery, featuring students, faculty, and alumni from Florida International University's School of Music. I'm your host today, Zach Weinstein, and along with our producers Karen Velos and Rodolfo Zuniga, we'd like to welcome you to the FIU Music Hour. Whether you're listening to us in your car or live on WDNA.org slash FIU, we are delighted to have you join us today for our live performance. Today, we are joined by jazz guitar professor Tom Lippincott and jazz drums professor Rodolfo Zuniga. Since 2011, this bassless duo has performed and worked on many live concerts and recording sessions alongside names such as Ed Schuler, Don Friedman, and Gary Campbell. They will be showcasing original compositions and arrangements that will feature a wide spectrum of styles within the jazz idiom. What are we going to hear first today? Free improv? Free improv. Take it away.
and that was some free improv by Tom Lippincott and Rodolfo Zuniga. Next, we're going to hear a medley of Blackbird by John Lennon and Paul McCartney, Mysterioso by Thelonious Monk, and Lonnie's Lament by John Coltrane.
and that was Blackbird by John Lennon and Paul McCartney and Mysterioso by Thelonious Monk. My apologies, Lonnie's Lament was not part of that medley, but it is part of this one with John, uh, Lonnie's Lament by John Coltrane and Mad World by Roland Orzabal.
just heard Tom Lippincott and Rodolfo Zuniga on the FIU Music Hour on WDNA 88.9 FM. We'll be right back after these messages.
you just heard Tom Livicott and Rodolfo Zuniga on the FIU Music Hour on WDNA 88.9 FM. So, how are you both today? Good, thank you. Very good. And how long have you been at FIU? I have been at FIU since 2007, I'm pretty sure. I think uh, near around the same, maybe 2008, but around the same time, yeah. And playing together since 2011 or earlier than that? I think actually I just recently found the first gig we did together. Oh, that's right, it was 2008, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it actually is 2008, but you know, we we were doing we were doing different different uh, concerts and gigs around town, but I think we've been playing playing together on di in different groups more like probably around 2011 2012 more yeah more uh, consistently. So it's been a long time. I'm and so was happy. there a personal favorite performance that you both had together? You go first. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the thing that comes to my mind first, and it, it's not just a performance, but it was a, a trip that. I took with Rodolfo and his band Surfaces with Strings to Costa Rica. Um, he, you know, he's from Costa Rica and he goes there quite a bit. And it was a real joy to get to see that country and how beautiful it is. And I, I thought the people there were great and uh, the, the places we played were, were really cool. It's just a, a really fun, memorable trip. So I would have to say that that's just the first thing that yeah. comes to my yeah. mind. Yeah, I mean, I, I, there's been so many, so many great ones. It, it was. Definitely, that was a highlight, and I'm uh, definitely grateful to to associate myself with Tom because he's always been a pioneer to me in many ways, composing, writing, and playing just so so unique, and that's something that that I strive for, even doing this this duo. But but I love I, I loved recently finding that first performance we ever did together because that was kind of go way back into into what your thought process was was at that time. And I do remember like being, even from that moment, just amazed at the uniqueness of Tom's approach. And I'm still, so ah, that's just so cool for me to go back and listen to that first one. So I would, probably one of my favorites is the first one <laughs> ever. <laughs> yeah, that was a good gig. I'm glad we got a recording of it. Yeah, yeah. So Tom, what's it like performing duos with percussion? Um, that's actually something I've been doing for quite a while, um, believe it or not. This is, I mean, Rodolfo and I have played duo like it is house before, yeah. but this is only our second public performance as a duo. As a duo, yeah. We played uh, at Lanyap, where Rodolfo has his steady gig. Uh, when was that, about two months ago? Probably. Um, I was just, it was just a sub situation, but it was a lot of fun. And I, I remember saying at the end, man, we should do this again. Right. Um, but as far as... Uh, my history with that, uh, there's a percussionist up in Palm Beach County who's also a great recording engineer named Dave Shanzer, and he and I started playing together as a duo way back in the 1990s, uh, different various gigs, and so I kind of got used to playing with just guitar and percussion that way. And, um, and then the, one of the drum teachers at University of Miami, who's an old friend of mine and good friend, is Steve Rucker, and he and I had a, a little duo that we were doing for a while it was kind of a, I guess we were kind of going for like an avant-garde kind of a vibe with that. And we, we played for a few years. And then more recently, there's a percussionist here in Miami named Steve Cornix, who uh, is kind of a, a fearless uh, guy when it comes to finding performance opportunities. He's got a duo with me and he's got duos with a few other people. And he's just always really a go-getter when it comes to trying to find performance opportunities. So I've... Uh, had the pleasure of you know getting a lot of experience playing uh, duo with percussion with him as well so yeah it's something I and, and I really enjoy doing it because as you can probably hear I have a lot of opportunity and freedom being the only sort of player that's playing notes and melodies so I can kind of do anything I want in a way it's it's totally free and yet I have the support of uh, in this case a drummer and I've always loved playing with Ralfo because he's such a musical uh, player. He, he's not just, you know, a great drummer. He's also a great musician, a great composer, just a great musical thinker. And that, to me, comes across in his playing. So it's, it's an extra treat to get to play duo with him, too. So speaking of support, Rodolfo, how, what is your approach to playing without a bass player? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. I mean, I... Uh, there's a few different ways that I go about it. They're, they're not 
they're not all the same. It depends on what, who the other person is that's, that's taking that role. So in this case, well, first of all, lately I've been playing a lot in that setting. Um, so I've gotten more, more experience doing that. I, I have a steady gig weekly that I do with an organ player, a friend of ours, Derek Fairholm. So that's different because he's playing the bass, but it's still a different approach to the bass because it's not really the percussive uh, sound that you're used to or feeling that you're used to. So, so you, you learn some flexibility there. You learn to, in my case, you learn to think of your quarter note pulse as a, as a wider, more open, broader concept because you're not trying to match the percussiveness of the bass player. You're actually trying to, to uh, make your quarter note um, support the whole spectrum of, of, of the duo in a way. And I remember Adam Nussbaum talking about that before, playing in, playing in organ trios a lot. Um, and another thing that, especially in this trio, is great is that um, we are not, and, and Tom can correct me if, if, if I'm wrong, we, we have a lot more flexibility when it comes to the, the time field, the meter, the, the transitions, because we're we're both like kind of reacting to, to the moment in that regard. If if there was a bass player, if there was a third person, I think that flexibility would go away a little bit because then you have to have three other people in sync to that flexibility. But in this case, the cool thing is that we don't have to delineate transitions as much. So I try to keep a different perspective. Usually, I would teach my students, or I would encourage my students to be real clear about their transitions and the form and you know things of that sort. In this case, it's not that you're not clear, it's that you're flexible with it. And that's, that's actually really nice. I mean, the only other group that comes to mind that actually has a bass player that plays like that is the Key Jarrett Trio in a way, where it's just, you know, they can float in and out of transitions in a, in a, in a more, in a looser way. So I, I think of that to some extent. And but also it's just that I just love the challenge of going through different things. Like for example, if Tom uses a, a looper at a certain moment, which which has a bass line, then I got to think more like a, like I'm playing with a bass player. But then I had I got to have the flexibility to go a different way. So all that to say that Tom is is really what I'm focusing on, and wherever he goes, I try to be supportive but also flexible so that we can move from place to place. And no offense to any bass players listening in today. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not at all. Um, but it's, a, it, it's, it's definitely different. And we, I don't think there's a class that teaches you that. So it, it's, a, it's kind of a nice opportunity to have to, to learn how to do that. Yeah, of course. True. So do you, either of you have any upcoming projects? Well, we just released a concert well it's not released yet i just finished it but it's going to be released soon on february 21st a virtual concert um, with my group that tom is a part of um, and uh, in the concert itself one of tom's pieces is actually the soundtrack it, it kind of became like a concert slash little documentary um, so that's part of a series that uh, nova south eastern has a jazz series that we've been playing for a while and we actually recorded a, a, an album with that band. The band is called Surfaces. It's a band that I've been leading for a while with a string trio and a rhythm section. And uh, I've been lucky enough that Tom has contributed some, some compositions for that. Um, I've been writing music for it and some of the other members. So February 21st, it's going to be released online. Um, and uh, I will have more information on my website when that's going on. Um, that's something that comes to mind. Um, that, that we are both involved in. How about you, Tom? Um, I, I, well, I have an educational thing that I just did. Um, I, I do uh, video classes for a website called Mike's Master Classes that does kind of jazz guitar instructional material. And um, I just recently finished a class up that's called Spring is Here, Exploring the Harmony of Bill Evans. The pianist Bill oh, Evans awesome. is one of my big heroes. And so it, I think that class is gonna be available in about a week. Well, perfect. Uh, what are we going to hear next today? So I think we're going to, I mean, one of the other things I love about playing with Tom is, is to also just play some, some unplanned things, some, some just uh, free improvisation. So I think we're going to do a little bit of that and then transition to more arranged 
things to end the show. Perfect.
You've been listening to the FIU Music Hour on WDNA 88.9. I'm your host, Zach Weinstein, and along with our producers, Karen Velos and Rodolfo Zuniga, we'd like to thank our production crew and the staff of WDNA 88.9 FM for today's broadcast. We love to share our talents and faculty with musicians in our community, so make sure to call 305-384-2896 if you would like more information on all of our programs. Also, do not forget to like our Facebook page to stay up to date with all of our upcoming music performances. Next week, join us again here at at 11 a.m. for some great music on the FIU Music Hour. To play us out again is Tom Lippincott and Rodolfo Zuniga with Passion Dance by McCoy Tyner, Milestones by Miles Davis, and Josie by Donald Fagan, and Over the Rainbow by Harold Arlen.